Hi there, welcome to lesson two. And we'll be dealing with something very, very massive, something very interesting, and that helps you. I'd mentioned in intro introductory, um, uh, introducing the entire module in the introductory lesson, that uh, the danger about duplicates is that something that should be counted once is counted twice or thrice because it appears there. I also use an example that in the census, I could be, I could be called to give, uh, what's the word? to give my data twice. And that's very wrong in a sense because you only count one person twice. So that's the best way to describe it. But as we go into the um, the understanding of the theories, I'm sure it will greatly help you uh, to understand. And then we'll end up also with looking at the duplicates, some, some of the duplicate commands and the tags they have. Okay, so let's get back to setting fundamentals. We talked about entities. Yes, entities again. We are here with entities again. That's where we started in module one. It's something with a distinct, that's the word, distinct existence. That means myself, your trainer, cannot have another person that looks like me. So we must find what makes each one different. Now you can, you can create a group of dolls that are identical, which is true. But when you are going to sell them, they have a tag that makes them different from each other. So it's very important there's a distinction, a distinction. And I want to dwell on that and how it will help us track what we call duplicates. Now let's look at these rules again. So, you know, it's very easy when you look at a table like this, I say, well, Florence, you know, she's female, she likes jollof rice and all this stuff. We had gone through this table in, in, in Moodle 1. And then it's easy to contrast with James. But sometimes we have data like this. And it's very rare, but it's, it's, there's a tendency where we have someone who has the same name, same date of birth, probably same age, and like the same weight, slightly. So we need to find a way to differentiate the two Florences in court. So this is really, really, uh, just must say, maybe one in a million or one in a billion where you find somebody who has the same name, you know, maybe not the same facial feature, maybe one is African and one is European, you know. So there must be a way to distinguish between them. And this is one of the basic uh, ethics of data. Very important that you have it. Uh, sometimes when you're giving, you don't have anything that makes it distinctive. Now let's just go straight into the meat of the matter. So there are variables. I'm sure you know what a variable is now. Those columns, those attributes. There's a variable or group of variables. Now mark, mark my words, I said, variable or group of variables or attributes that should not share the same value with any other entity in database terminology they are called keys they cannot these are variables that don't share any other value should not you know they do but they should not you know so for example my fingerprint should never be yours never and i should never have any other person who has my ex same exact same fingerprint so let's give a couple of examples. I'm sure you see them every day, but you just don't re realize them and then talk about it. So remember, they cannot share any order. So can you imagine it's now passport? Somebody has your exact number. It will flag it in the system. The system is, is, is designed to flag duplicates. Nobody can share your international passport ID with you. So you could check. There's nobody in the world that has it. It's where you combine it with your country. Maybe some other country has the number, but from a different country. So that makes it different because we said a group of variables. So your driver's license too. Nobody should have it. By punching in the numbers into the system, we have a large database of drivers in the country, your country and Maya, I know. You should be able to get you, you exactly. Then your exam ID. Can you imagine two people writing the same exam, uh, having the same IDs? How do you grade them? How do you score them? And this was a true life story where someone accidentally put in her number for somebody else's number. School ID, same thing. Your credit card number, interesting too. You know, should be unique to you. Nobody in the whole wide world should have it. Your car number plate should be unique. So it's very important that you identify it in the data quickly. It should be unique. Now, I keep using the word should. Sometimes it's not. So we want to know if you are counting two cars, I mean, one car twice or three times, or you're counting four drivers, I mean, one driver four times. So that's the whole idea of tracking duplicates. 
Now let's put a layer of complication because we had mentioned groups. So when more than one variable forms an ID, now you know I said a group of variables. Now if we look at this table, all of them are Florence. All of them have the same weights. They have different seem to have different state ID numbers. You know, so if I said I want to uh, focus on the state ID and say okay, there will be duplicates there because. The first Florence and second Florence share the same state ID. So ugh, there's no way to differentiate if I use state ID. I can see that the third Florence does not have that. So I said, okay, I would not use state ID. Rather, I will use um, the state, the, the variable state. Now, when I move to the variable state, just a minute, here, I find out that Kaduna 2 <laughs> or KD as a state in Nigeria have the same IDs. So there's a challenge here. So, and that's why we do a combination of the two variables. Now, if you look for those two combinations, all three of them are unique. So sometimes we do two, sometimes we do three. So if you see the first Florence, she has KN 1004. The second Florence has KD 1004. And the third Florence has KD. 1002 so very easy now to track if any of the florences were were, were, were were counted twice and that leads us to the command we call the duplicates tag now duplicate is the main command but it has quite a number of variants so we're, we're only using duplicates tags this creates a variable to identify duplicate observation based on the id variable if the observation is a duplicate then we have this variable as a value of one or at least one otherwise it is zero that's how it works uh, this is the syntax for duplicates tag so you have duplicate tags you specify the variables which are the id variables and you can use the if in statement now duplicate tag generates a variable to help us identify what kind of i mean so that we can see it in the variable so it creates an extra variable that helps us to tell us which entities or which roles or observations are having duplicate values so this is an example here that you find duplicate tag national id comma generates and then you say national id duplicates or duplicate tag vehicle id generates vehicle duplicates so it helps you now we are going to the main practical class where we would uh, look at stata and be able to use this to help us identify duplicate tags. We'll just do some assumptions because we're using uh, data that you are readily accepted, uh, accessible to you and hopefully you should be able to get this. So see you in the practical class. Thank you so much for your time. So hi there, welcome to this uh, session, uh, practical session where we'll be trying to track duplicates. Now we had already mentioned uh, that the IDs are very key. I mean, sorry, there are variables that we call the ID variables. Now, with the data that the data that was pre-installed with data, we cannot really find one where we have these ID issues. So let me um just um use the census data. Now, the census data has um fifty observations. So we'll do a quick review of what it looks like using the browse command. So these are the two simple things I did, two lines. CCU sensors clear browse. So um, if you have Stata pre-installed on your on your system, if you have installed Stata, you should have this. So if you're not watching from the very first video, I mean you may you may be a bit lost, but um I would advise if you're a beginner, complete beginner, you come in, you start from the very first. Uh, you know the very very first uh, video so let's see what it looks like in the editor window by browsing so we have browse this is the editor window and okay so we can even find something that has to do with duplicates now and i just remembered so um i was really a bit i wanted to make sure that we're able to use data that we already have so we said the id variable is that variable that has a unique value throughout the um, data set. So what's interesting actually here is that we have two ID variables that we can use. 
but I will explain why one is stronger than the other. So here we have Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, um, California, Colorado, and down, down to Maryland and um, Montana, New Jersey, New, New York, and all that down, all the 50. Now, if you look at this data set, the likely uh, reference, of course, we are looking for reference. Now, each entity, so listen very well. Each entity is a state. If you look at the data set, so every row is describing a state, and that's very important when you are doing your duplicates. You need to know what each row. It's called technically uh, a unit of observation. So this unit of observation tells you that every observation is describing something. It could be a state. It could be a child, it could be a parent, it could be a household, it could be a firm, it could be a pupil, it could be any entity. And I'm sure if you are in, if you have gone back to Moodle while you remember. So this row 32 is talking about New York and New York alone. So that's how it works. Now let's scroll, I mean, out and back a bit. So now we have different figures here. But because it's 50 states, it's clear that you may not only, you may have, what's the word? You may only have, you may have unique values for population. No two states are supposed to have the same thing. But when you are referring to it, something like an ID, you know, we talked about ID variables. We talked about number plates. We talked about uh, school ID. We talked about your bank account number. We talked about your telephone number. So, these are not ideal because these ones are talking about they are describing and it's possible you know it's very possible that two states may have the same population so they may have the same median age you know so let's look at let's look for duplicates for median age let's just to check if we have any uh, like that maybe any clues among the 50 so what do we do let's get back to our our do file again so one of the commands we were taught now is um, sorry duplicates tag and then we're looking at median age so what i would love to do with this editor mode is just to split it out like i've done before split the screen into two so i can be looking at everything so i am looking for median age i've also told you you can drag to your see i've dragged that variable here now and then you would just say generate duplicates so what i'm saying here is or duplicate is that i want you to generate a variable called duplicate or let me put it like this median duplicate sorry median underscore duplicate so i put that clear so what it does it goes to let's go there median age which is here and looks for if there are any duplicates and then tags them so what i will also do is that it is going to it's generating a variable called median duplicate so what will happen when i run this i need to remove the browse is that at the end of this data set we would have there so duplicate start i will start now so i will just yeah so it's just best that i do this so that you can look at it as it happens i like you to see the entire process so there will be a variable created by what i've designed here there will be a variable called median duplicate just designed uh i think it's now after the anyways it would it will appear somewhere here okay so i will run now and let's go back and see what has happened so this is the median age this is now the median duplicate and how do you know you see the name is there this was the variable we talked about just some seconds ago so wherever there is no duplicates we will find that we have zero but wherever there is for example this uh two point i mean 29.2 you know it means we have two occurrences of that duplicate that means it occurs uh 
we have two extras as well so it occurs this number occurs three times so to make it easy uh we'll just um browse if duplicates oh sorry median duplicates is greater than zero now what that does for us is we only see all the duplicates or all states that have duplicates in median age they have the same thing so let's go there so we have it now so you can see 29.20 29.20 here uh, okay each other one and 29.20 here so there are two extras so when you see the value if you add one to it it tells you the number of times it occurs in the data set so where i see three for example here it occurs four times in the data set that's what it just means so everywhere there is three it's likely going to be 30.10 30.10 pardon me 30.10 and then 30.10 so you can see that there are duplicates here so bottom line this is not a good um um id variable i'm sure you have seen that so we should have a pure and clean pure and clean zero throughout so now let's let's go on to looking at the state so definitely for state two and state if you look because there are no two indianas there are no two oklahomas there are no two uh washingtons you know every spelling here is the same so let's see what it looks like and um so i will do this i just copied that line and i will now say tag i'm tagging now state and i will call it state duplicate so creating one more variable now i've created the first variable here and now the second variable now let's go and run so i could remove this now it's not necessary another thing i could do actually is just comment it out so just say control slash what it means it will not run and the others will be able to run okay so uh it has been done i know it's very fast so you just execute and then go to the end so if you see go through no two states has the same name so we are good now you may just get away with it as clearly for state names but the problem and challenge actually is that the names are so long so if you wanted to refer the whole idea about getting those id variables most of the time is that sometimes you want to refer to a particular row so this is properly balanced and we have another variable that is also just going to have you give you zeros alone so that is um state two so the way they they combine the codes even though they start with l they make sure that they were unique but we're going to check so we can call it state two duplicate so we run again and then we check now in state two duplicates you don't see any two codes that would be dangerous you know for two states to have the same codes so that's how it works basically you know now i didn't mention this in the uh theory side but i think it would be useful that sometimes if you also want to know if a variable is unique and does not have duplicates you know the whole spirit behind duplicates is the counting twice we don't want people to count someone twice so let's go there it's called the is id just ask it is this an id and then we'll check it out here so let's minimize this and come back here so if i say is id median age and then you run it says the variable median age or med age does not uniquely identify the observations so let's take state and try it sorry ctrl z 
just copy control C control paste control V and then run again so when you see this without any error state is unique what about stage 2 let's do that so it's unique so that is how we get to manage duplicates here now this data set is not duplicated i don't even expect it to be um uh, but we have to identify the id variables and you have to be very careful you are not using uh, variables even though they are different because i'm very sure if you use population no 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 two states will have the same population but uh, they are not ideal because they have the tendency of being duplicate and normal so i can share your name i can share your age but I cannot share your bank account number. So that is why the first two variables are just ideal. Now let's took, go back a bit and look at the, um, let's look at the region. Of course, straight away you see two, two regions are saying West. Two regions are saying West. So you can combine state and region just in case we have two states that have the same name or the same uh, code now and it will still be okay but it's not really the ideal example i want to show but i will just try it all the same i'll just show you all the same so we have states two and then we have region so you can combine two variables like a var list you know and find out if they are unique so let's move out now. So let's look at this. Where are we? Let's go back here. Nope. I thought we were okay. Oops, I think I'm in the wrong place. Wrong two files. So that's it basically. You can see that state uh, and region are different. So they are different for every observation. That's what it means. But if I took only region, remember we had, let's go back there again. Just look at the data editor. We had not more than one West. If I want you have one value, you know, and you can't differentiate two from three, both of them are West. It's not an ID variable. It's not very good. Uh, when we move on to module 10, I think or module nine, we'll move on to the very final stages. We will refer back to these ID variables because they are very, very powerful and they greatly help us do our work. So I also want to add, I mean, just encourage you if there are certain uh, data sets that don't have ID variables, you may have to create one yourself. So uh, please bear that in mind. And um, it's dangerous if we had state, for example, or name in the first column. Two people can bear the same name even though you get away with the current data set if data set is expanded in the future you may be in trouble so i hope this has helped you know to help you identify what i did i didn't finish the um sorry i did not finish the the re region part so let's just do that run it just to show so region does not unif uniquely identify the observations so that's another command that is very important when you are trying to identify variables. I've kept things very, very low profile because you're just at the beginning level. Now, duplicate has so many options. Remember in module two, we talked about it. So we have duplicate list. We have some other options in duplicates that will greatly help you. So it's important that you um, take some time to also explore that, but just don't complicate things, just start very simple. And then we'll not add layers of complexity when you have mastered the fundamentals. So thank you so much for your time. I will see you in the next lesson when we use a couple of commands also to try and check for uh, completeness. Thank you and see you in the next lesson.